Right now, I'm joined by Mandy Baggett with her uh, new book, Taking Charge. Hi, Mandy. Hi, How Simone. are you? So this is your fifth book now? It is, yeah. And uh, could you explain a little bit about it? It's romance, isn't it? It is, contemporary romance. This one's set in America. Robin Mathers is coming back to America. She's lived in the UK for nine years and her father's had a major heart attack. So she leaves her life in the UK to travel to see her dad. When she gets there, she's got to take over his roadhouse and his ice hockey team. But on the plane, she meets gorgeous hunk mm. and ice hockey player, uh, Cole Ryan. Yeah. So that's when that all kicks off. And uh, it's, it's partly in America and partly in England. Is there a reason why you wanted to do it like that? Have you got a, a sort of a, a love for America? I've noticed some of your other books have that as well. Yeah, well, my dad actually lives in America. So oh, right. Okay. It's actually set in his hometown there in Portage in Michigan. Um, we went over to visit him in 2010. Um, meant to be for 10 nights. Actually got stuck there for 21 when the ash, How that? The, um, ash cloud from the volcano oh, in Iceland descended oh, and we yeah. couldn't get home. So while I was there, I really got involved with the community. We went to see ice hockey and the story of Robin and Cole was quickly born in my mind. I was desperate to write their book when I got home. Did you get inspired by some of the guy character, the male uh, hockey players there? As uh, like there a kind were quite of a few hot men, I have yeah, to say. Yeah, I'm sure there were, especially on the hockey team. <laughs> yeah, there were, yeah. Which is where it kind of centres around and also the, uh, there's a diner um, aspect to it as well where she's That's setting right. up, helping her father to um, kind of revamp his business because it's right. gone downhill. Yeah. Um, and you know your main character is quite an interesting one. She's kind of a bit tomboyish. Is that she something is. you wanted to do? Yeah, she's a bit stuck um, in a, as a teenager, really. Um, she had something happen to her when she was a teenager in America, and that's kind of shaped how she is now. So she can't really move on from that, um, and that's why she's quite immature in her outlook, and she's just governed by what's happened to her. Now, this is your fifth book, uh, obviously in the romance genre. Yeah. Do you find it easy to come up with new ideas for romances? Does it get ideas everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere I go. You get inspired just literally just walking around, exactly. you listening on in the conversations. Train, meeting, meeting different people all the time. And so I've got so many ideas, I have to note them all down for future books. Um, but then I have to focus on the one that I'm actually writing at the moment and, and try and get my head down with that. But yeah, ideas everywhere. And do you focus on the characters? Is that how you start off your idea or uh, how does it usually start? Yeah, I usually start off with my probably my male character before my female character because oh. I like to have the, the hot hunk um, and then the female <laughs> character and creating them and finding out what drives them really starts the story. And I usually have a, a beginning and an end and then I kind of let the characters lead themselves into whatever's going to happen in the middle. Now in the book there's this kind of idea that you can fall in love really really quickly. Mm. Um, where do you do you think that's actually true in real life? Have you ever seen anything like that that gave you that idea? Well I pretty much fell in love with my husband quite quickly oh, and then had you? to chase him for 10 years to actually <laughs> get him to fall in love with me but yeah I think it can happen. I think there can be an instant connection whether it works as quickly as it does with Robin and Cole um, I don't really know but it is fiction so you kind of People believe in love at first sight, I think, or want to believe in it, and you kind of give that to them in book form, they enjoy it. And what's important to have in a character that's like a romantic kind of uh, interest? What do you think is important traits you need to put into them? What, into the male character? Yeah. I still th think that people love an alpha male. Mm. So um, I think they have to be strong, but I think they have to have an edge of vulnerability yes. and something in their past that's, you know, that shaped who they are. They've got to be interesting. They can't just be someone who rescues the heroine, she's got to stand on her own right and, and want the man to compliment her life in some way. Because yeah, the main character in this has that, that kind of personality. Yeah, she does. She the very wants to take charge of everything. So Taking yeah. charge, exactly, yes, the title. Right, yeah. And um, what, other, what other books have you got coming up, actually? I've got a new book coming out in April with mm -hmm. Sapphire Star Publishing. They're my American publishers. It's called Security, and it's a little bit different. It is yeah. contemporary romance, but it's um, romantic suspense. So it's a hot bodyguard called Nathan Regan. Ooh. Sons and Regan. Yeah, and he's got a pop star that he's got to look after yeah. called Autumn Rain. Um, and it's about there. She's been threatened with kidnap. So kind of a bit the bodyguard, but... Um, the alpha male kind of character, yeah, with the sensitive side to him. Yeah, there is more to him, so... I'm intrigued by that. Yeah. Will you join me after the break? I will do. Great. Well, after the break, Mandy's going to be doing something that no other author has done, so stay tuned.
Welcome back to Loaded Chicklet. I'm still joined by Mandy Baggett with her fantastic book, Taking Charge, a lovely romantic novel with alpha male sexy beasts <laughs> in it and uh, women who are strong and tough and know what they want in life. That's right. And uh, I wanted to know, what do you actually think about like things like Fifty Shades and books like that, which are a little bit more kind of graphic and go down that line. What, what's your opinion on that type of writing? Well, I think if you know if people are enjoying that sort of novel, then that's brilliant because I just like people to read. So if yeah. they're reading erotica or historical romance, that's good because they're reading, especially the romance genre yeah. in general, because you know it just boosts the popularity of romance and love. And we were, we were talking earlier about, because um, you've got an American publisher, Sapphire, how that actually the American audience like a little bit more, you know, steamy scenes and things like that. Yeah. Do you find that you have to do that a little bit more? I do. I've um I like I like closing the bedroom door myself because for <laughs> me it's the initial um, connection with the characters, yeah. um, but I do have to hot up my scenes because I think um, the US market likes things a little bit spicier, but maybe that would change. I found that quite surprising actually. Yeah. Well, well I now guess Fifty Shades, maybe that would change. Do you find that really weird to write though? A little Is bit. It a little strange. I don't think I'm <laughs> using any toys in any of my romance scenes. <laughs> Not going that far. Um, you do a lot of online publicity, don't you, for your yeah. books? Do you find that authors these days it's have to do that? Is it quite an important thing to do? I think so, because obviously I'm, I've been self-published before. I was taken yeah. on by Sapphire, and I found that using social media, Twitter, mainly Twitter, but Facebook as well, LinkedIn, all those sort of networking sites can really help build your profile as an author. And so many independent authors are doing that now that I think the traditionally published authors have got to try and step up a little bit and also join in with that that thing so do you find that that you can grow quite a huge audience online definitely that way I think now that readers are buying their books online they're looking to connect with people online much more than ever before and so you'd be a fool not to take advantage of of meeting people meeting readers on social media sites it I think it's a lot easier for authors now to get their work out before they're even published. Definitely. Even so, that probably helps. I mean, I've met quite a lot of authors who've done it that way. They start online and then the publisher notices that they've got a loyal audience reading their books and then it, it goes that way. That's right. I think a lot of publishers are now asking what your social media platform is. Really? And they're, yeah. they're probably more interested if it's between two. They might be more interested in the one that's actually built up a following than they would be to someone who wasn't even on Twitter. So. And you're a massive blogger as well, because um, as I've realised when I looked on your blog, they voted for your outfit today. They did. It was the most fun <laughs> thing. This is one of the outfits. There was two. Um, wasn't my favourite. My favourite is one that didn't get any votes whatsoever. But I went with I went with. The I poll. saw all your outfits. This is all right, though. Yeah. yeah, I went with the poll. We went with the green and blue. So there we go. Good choice, guys. Good choice. <laughs> and something you've done, which is actually very unique for an author, is you have at the front of this a, a kind of like playlist. Um, and you've got all these kind of like country songs which kind of suit the mood of the book because yeah. it's got that kind of country feel to it. That's right. And what made you decide to do that? Well, I've got quite a lot of songs here. Yeah, like, um, a lot of the country rock songs that are in there were played when I was over in America. They have loads of country rock channels on the radio over there. So a lot of them were things that I heard while I was driving to the ice hockey or while I was there. And so when I came home, that was the music I wanted to listen to while I was writing the book to get mm. myself in the mood. Yeah, and uh, you actually sing at your uh, book signings. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Which song's the one that um, we're going to get you to sing today? Oh, get your cowboy on. Would you do it for I me? Will. Yes, of course. Okay. So now we're going to have Mandy Baggett singing Get Your Cowboy On. Five o'clock on Friday, get your dually diesel running. There's a party going on. Everybody, come on, get your cowboy on. Get your cowboy on Calling all your country boys and hillbilly honeys Paint your wranglers on Come on and shake your money Get your cowboy on Get your cowboy on And that's Mandy Baggett's book, Taking Charge.